Hello everyone, this is Dr. Archangel, and I'm here with a new installment of Dungeons and Daily Dragons. So anyway, I have quite a few topics to cover today, but I can only talk about three at a time so I can keep these videos short and watchable without you all getting bored. So I'm going to start with the three topics that work well together because they're under the same subject. Attack on Titan. Now, the third season's release date, in specifics to July, is not one of these three topics, but it will be the moment I hear of it. And when I do, I have a video in the works regarding Attack on Dragon's release date as well. So anyway, if you follow comicbook.com, you would know there are a few articles regarding the epic anime we talk about now. The first topic I'd like to talk about is the fact the anime changed its network in Japan to a place called Animedia, I believe? It's a catchy name if I may offer my opinion on the network's part, so kudos. So as far as I've noticed, some people were concerned for its censorship, or at least that's what's implied with this particular article I found. But luckily, the developers have assured us that the gore and action will remain the same as it always have been. Excellent. Um, as we all know and should know, Attack on Titan is well known for being brutal in both to its characters and our hearts. Unless your heart is hard enough or it's broken already to the point where it's not affected, so more or less on your parts, fans. Anyway, so um, second topic at hand I'd like to discuss. A more recent article from IGN actually. So, according to the article next, regarding the actor John Boyega, who you may know from the Star Wars trilogy, and more specifically, and more recently, actually, Pacific Rim 2 Uprising. Actually, if I may change the subject for just a quick moment, I do intend to review that movie. I just need to find the time to watch it. My job is a killer of my time. I'm so sorry. It's kind of one of the reasons why I don't post more consistently. Anyway, uh, back to the article. While promoting his new movie, as said before, John Boyega is a big fan of Attack on Titan. And from what I've read, he's very interested in both producing a live-action Attack on Titan movie and becoming a Titan himself in the movie. Alright, now hold up. Before you go pulling out your torches and pitchforks, Rounding up your friends and starting an angry mob won't get you anywhere with this. There's nothing confirmed, so cool your jets. I mean, after the backlash of the last Attack on Titan movies, I cannot imagine them rebooting the live-action franchise anytime soon. At least. I mean, come on. You... In my co-author's opinion, for Attack on Dragon and Fallout Ghoul, as you know as TK, he says there's no pleasing anime fans with live-action adaptations or at least most of the fans. There's only so much a live action can do compared to its anime counterpart. I mean, I'm not going to name any, because it, it, just, just no. But hey, if another live action adaptation for Attack on Titan is on the table, then I am 100% game. I, for one, am one of the very few people who actually liked the Attack on Titan live actions. It may not have followed the anime, of course, but I am not complaining myself. Yeah, there were some dull moments, but I think its portrayal did what it needed to do in its... in what it was given. Uh, Alright, final topic is actually a slightly juicy one, because it's from the thoughts of Isayama himself, the creator of Attack on Titan. Actually, if you didn't know that, well, I probably shouldn't have said that, so... Going back to comicbook.com, Isayama said, and I quote, after writing Volume 12 in the period between 13 and 16 was when I felt the most disappointed with my work. Hopefully now that Season 3 is being made, I'll have the chance to wipe away that regret and replace it with something I'm proud of. Hmm. Strong talk, Isayama. My respect's over here. And I hope you get what you want out of this third season too, so break a leg on that. Or a hand depending on how much you draw on a regular basis. Anyway, I'd like to share my own thoughts on this. Now, I'm going to talk about this in two ways. One, as a fanboy, 
and two, as a professional storyteller, or as professional as I can be at the moment. I'm not really—I can't really say I'm a professional, professional, but I am. I take my storytelling very seriously. All right, my two messages to you, Isayama, begins here. All right, fanboy first. Let's get this one out of the way first. Just please, 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 please. Don't separate Mikasa and Aaron for too long in this season. I read those volumes, and those two hardly had screen time together. So please reconsider giving them more screen time together. Within reason, of course. <clears throat> Alright, that's done. Now then, as a professional storyteller. Now, I'll admit, there was some pretty dull moments, and maybe some things that could have been better. But as a storyteller myself, I've learned that pushing a story forward can be difficult sometimes. Not enough action doesn't incite the thrill for both the author and the reader, and for that the story suffers. But from what I've learned, when a story is hurt, it can be healed with not just more action, but with insightful information. But the story can suffer with too much information as well. Stories need a good blend of both information and action, in my opinion. Now, if you combine action with juicy information that moves the story forward, then you are pushing not just strongly, but smartly. Now, of course, combining action and information evenly doesn't go well with every particular scene. Uh, sometimes one scene needs more information than action, and another needs more action than information. But hey, Isayama, if you found anything that you should have done instead and have a chance to change it, then I say, go for it. The way I see it, Isayama, we're both on a journey to make good stories. The only difference is that you're farther in that journey than I am. But I hope to catch up with you soon. Alright, that is all I have to say for this episode of D&DD. &D. You can find the articles discussed here in the description below. And while you're at it, to my audience, please check out my good storytelling video. Uh, it should be on the screen coming up. As well as my last message to Isayama. Please check those videos out. Anyway, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up and be sure to leave your comments down below. Not to mention subscribe while you're at it, that'd be very nice. And as always, I'll see you next time.